becoming boring to me and now I do focus on face-to-face -face interactions with people not bacteria not plants people that's just more exciting starting my third year of PhD I knew I'm out I just want to finish I knew that I had to finish though because I was on this scholarship I felt like I really had to finish and then I take that as how I did it and then take that as a, as a, as a you know, like a, a door opener for me to go into the industry with a PhD. It also opened up so many opportunities and I'm very grateful for that. And I think had I quit it, I, I didn't have an option to quit. I was like on a, on a scholarship and a student visa. I didn't have an option to quit. So I really wanted to finish. So at least my student visa would also come to end with no problem and I can start like a job hunting visa but luckily i didn't have that i just went straight in i got like a, a permit what, what, what was it called like just a work permit i got that as a visa and that was really nice <laughs> i'm excited to talk today about why i left science and like just why I left academia, especially at the end of my PhD and where am I at now two years after I've made that decision. It was a very difficult decision, but I knew I made that even, I would say I made that decision a year before I left. I just knew I don't want to be in science anymore. I had to go. There were all the reasons. Oh, I don't know. I had so many reasons why I should leave academia why i should leave science and start something completely new and this is what i'm going to share with you today and i'm just super super excited i probably waited way too long i also wanted to be a little bit <laughs> comfortable because i wasn't sure if i was going to leave forever it's not like forever it's only been two years but i would say in those two years i didn't feel like or still not feeling like i should go back so i wanted to wait a little bit longer than just leaving in a week later you say i left i left i left so why did I leave? Before we get to that, if you are new on this channel and you enjoy this kind of video, give us a like and subscribe as well as hitting the bell next to the subscribe button so that you get an information or a notice every time we release a new video. And we do kind of videos, I would say three times a week. Also, one thing that I would like to know is is there anybody on this channel who like completely changed their career and it's not like you're done but you've invested so much time on one thing and then in the end you just completely change is there anybody who can just share their experience like this share that in the comment uh, description if you changed your career from what you have initially thought you would become to what you are at the moment Growing up in Namibia during my time when I was going to high school and also university science careers or courses were really highly promoted. So it was more like, oh, if you're smart or if you have really good grades, you, you were not even thinking about anything. I was not even thinking about anything else. It was put in my face like by my teachers, by also the promotion I see from the university courses and all the bursary that we all given in the in this for the science courses so it was just like if you would really have good performance at your high school and it was also a sign of just feeling smart because you are doing science it's one of those things and then you have a bachelor because you're a science student go so it was in always there although i would say when i was at high school i always loved to study biology i knew i wanted to become a medical doctor when I didn't get it, automatically then the next thing to that was just go to science and focus on the biology, like natural science, but biology, microbiology, molecular biology, anything biology, if you can't make it to whatever you want initially. And I've spent pretty much my life just spending time learning, writing, everything biology. I did a master's. I did a second master, then I also did PhD. So why I left? I would say the main reason, maybe I should tackle why I started hating, it's really doing the PhD, 
that's what made me realize that I don't want to be here for the rest of my life. It just the process of her PhD thesis writing, research, experimenting over and over ah, for four to just for four years. That that just made me hate it. So that's really number one. I realized when I was doing PhD, no, it's not for me. I'm not going to go because I knew that was probably the most difficult thing I did as a student. But I also was looking forward to a postdoc and other things like, like no, no, no. Another thing that really, really made me quit is living in Europe. If I was in Namibia and I had never left Namibia, I would still up to now be in science because in Namibia when you study science especially with a PhD and stuff your chances of getting a job like a stable job are quite high like you can just get a job at the university and start teaching I'm talking about at a, at a, at a PhD level I think you can get also some maybe director positions or some project management positions are good in Europe is a different story. There are so many, especially in nature, sciences, biology in particular, so many PhD graduates and eventually the system doesn't work very well in terms of getting a reliable job. So at the moment I realized I wanted to live longer in Europe. I definitely knew if I wanted to survive, I had to look for something more reliable. Considering that I moved here without my family, I would need to do everything pretty much. Like I need to, I, I would need to provide for myself. That alone just, I, I started thinking of other ways, how I can find a reliable job. And I mean, no job is really reliable, but I'm just saying, I just looked at my colleagues who were doing postdoc for about 10 years. Oh, and, and that's not like a 10 year contract. That's every year you get maybe a two-year contract, then you spend another year at home applying for the next project money because you have to get your own project money that has to fund your next two years project that you'll be working on. So, and I looked at those colleagues and I'm like, they were super experienced. They speak also native German language and they speak good English still it was difficult for them to get really reliable job because there are not so many professorship positions created permanent position i won't even talk about them because i would say at the institute where i work if you see a permanent position once every five or i don't know very very few very few permanent positions so it's always like short term and you also you have to be kind of flexible Maybe you get a contract first as a postdoc in Berlin for two years. Then after two years, your next contract might be in Spain as a postdoc. So that the situation of how the postdoc stuff works in Europe, I didn't like that. So I just started thinking of other ways. Now, another thing, how much time I spent in the lab by myself, pipetting all these things over and over and over doing them also 10 sometimes 24 hours experiments 12 hours monitoring <sighs> at some point you feel like oh this is my life going to be i used to be a party girl and all that die i used to be a party person like for all the people who know me from our master class like i was always at all parties at the university when I was doing my master course, then when I started doing my PhD, things were super hectic. I don't, I probably went to a party once in a year or so, or went to the disco once in a year. So I was always writing, setting up this, doing that. It was too much work and too much time spent by yourself doing really precise things. I was not, and it was not for me at all. Like that's when I realized this is not for me at all. And beside the time that I spend in the lab in, when you are doing PhD you realize how much work you really have to do to like if you want to stay in academia and then the money that you're getting it's depending on where you're working in most institute it's really little money and you're kind of working all the time and somehow the supervisors get used to almost asking you things to do when you're at home oh it's weekend but uh 
since you live next to the campus, can you please go and, and, and check this experiment and that and that? I'm like, it's literally a weekend and I'm not getting paid for weekend. It made me realize that this is not the way I want to go. I really want, after PhD, where I kind of didn't have weekends at all, I also went to the lab on Sundays. Of course, it was my choice because I think other people did their PhD a little bit slower and then you have really weekends. I was very limited on my sponsorship. I wanted to make sure that I'm not going to fund my own PhD. So I wanted to make sure that I was done with everything. With by the time this the, the, the sponsorship will also come to an end. So I was intensively working. But again, so much work. Like I'm thinking, I still sometimes get questions like oh let would you want to work on some data that you have i did that even a year after i would still i would still get contacts from my supervisors wanting us to work on something it's not like bad but i'm just saying why would i want to spend so much time those manuscript writing is a lot of time for something i'm not getting paid for it's work i'm doing on saturday and sunday evening it's so much work for free so what how has it been since i left yeah scary i would say it's scary it was a very tough decision when i made that decision that i had to leave but it's not like tough for for me and maybe for ali but i would say people around me who we did phd together were a little bit concerned like are you sure you want to quit and just go into something you really don't know i had no idea <laughs> for my current job i had no idea but I was more like on the idea of Lempi, you moved here by yourself and you need to find something reliable. So look for something reliable. As long as they give you training from the beginning, go there and take the training seriously, pass it and start. Then the other thing I was also thinking, I knew where I was, which was PhD and being in science and being in academics. I was not happy with that. So I already know like, might be very difficult, might be very challenging, but I'm not happy where I am at. I have to start doing something new or something different. I can't be here. I'm not I'm not willing to be there for the rest of my life. So I just knew I needed to change. So since then I dropped everything and I you know the relief that you get when you just like you defend, you know, it was really crazy because I like did my PhD defense and everything was nice and we're celebrating and stuff and I just left when we left that hall and we went home on the way home I just found a bin and I dropped like you know this special hat that you get on your picture I was like I'm done with this thing and I just threw it away <laughs> I'm done with this and I'm ready to start another chapter I was like and people were like are you not keeping it as a memory like I'm done with this thing and I threw that hat or whatsoever it's called for the graduation i just threw it in the bin and since then it has been really great i've been now working in a pharmaceutical industry or a sale industry i'm mainly it's pharmaceutical sales mainly but i think i'm just happy and i feel like i feel like it it fits my character more i love how i work or oh, i just love my current job because Back in the day, like with science and stuff, I feel like I was doing so much work and I was working so hard to make sure that I get my things done on time. I reach the goals that I set or were set for my PhD and so on. But there's no financial reward when you do that. And that was also very discouraging for somebody like me. It was very discouraging. So my current job is more like, here are your goals. You reach them, we give you a financial reward, like a premium or something. And, and I feel like I like that. And then beside that, it's not like it's excessive money. I just like that the goals are clear. And when you start your job all the time, you kind of, your week, your month, you kind of know what you want to achieve in every single week. And, and that is just, I love that because I think I'm a very, very goal oriented person. So then also you know i talk a lot i think everybody on this channel have seen it i love talking to people i love sharing i love discussions and that's why also our channel is full of so many discussions i love just creating some topics and want to discuss with art so my current job is like just really 
face-to-face -face interactions and discussions with clients and I think I just enjoy that more than in my science job or during my science time or what was going to be my science life which is more like sit at the computer and read and read a whole lot of articles and write a whole lot of articles. Eventually I realized that's not that's not for me and it doesn't suit my character my my characteristics so I had to to leave. Uh, the final thing I also wanted to say I think why I really left towards the end of my PhD I also realized I felt I've spent so much of my life studying because I was probably scared to just start something new so every time I was just thinking Oh, bachelor, <laughs> I'm not ready to go to the industry. I'm not, sh I don't think I'm ready. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think I'm ready. So I was like, I always have the next scholarship so I can still just hang around in the class. It's, it was more like my comfort zone. And yeah, master came, then, ah, oh, now where's the next again? So I'm not ready to teach people just with a master, like to be teaching or lecturing just with a master course. Where's the next scholarship? Then I went to another master, then I didn't feel ready. Then I went to a PhD. And I think at the end of the PhD, I was, I was 30 years old and I was just thinking, huh, okay, ready or not, I have to start leaving and I can't be hiding all the time just sitting in the class. I Eventually, I just feel like that, like at some point I have to get out of being a student. It's not like you stop learning, but just start something. And I really wanted to just get out of my comfort zone and start something new and more challenging. After four years or so many years of just doing biology, biology eventually also felt the environment was not challenging for me anymore i wanted something a little bit challenging and i had to move and sales in pharmaceutical was more like amazing and it's very challenging i would say still every single day is challenging and i feel like that is nice i love routines but it's nice to have like a change when you're in a work environment if you're thinking of working in a in a, in a certain field for a long time for me depending on who you are i think what I really hate most is getting bored and I feel eventually being in the lab and in front of the computer every single day was becoming boring to me and now I do focus on face-to-face -face interactions with people, not bacteria, not plants, people. That's just more exciting. Two more than two years after I've left, I'm doing amazing. I'm happy about the decision that I made. It's not like there haven't been challenges. There have been challenges, but there was never a day I felt like, oh, see, because this is a challenge, this is challenging for me to learn, this new for me to learn, I should go back. I still, I just feel happy and I feel like I made the right decision. I also want to highlight here, it doesn't mean science is not for everyone. Like I said, for me, mainly it was just moving to Europe changed everything because here PhD has different values and the environment is quite competitive especially for natural scientists Hi. if you enjoy this video give us a like subscribe to our channel and leave a comment i would love to hear from you what you think about science if there are scientists also watching this like even if you've done a bachelor and so you obviously know the field i would just love to hear from or maybe there are some countries apart from but yeah, maybe there are some other areas where it's also working way better or there are some areas where it's even worse. I don't know. I just like to hear how it is. And it doesn't mean I'm gone forever. But for now, I've decided to leave and I'm going to be away for some time. See you in our next video. Ciao, ciao, ciao. And greetings from Bubuccino. Yeah. Don't move your hand a little bit up. Yes. And greetings from Bubuccino.